Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here. Um, we're all in lockdown, as probably many of you know, and uh, many of us are around the world right now, so we can't go out and about so much as perhaps we would like to. Uh, nevertheless, it's a time to reflect on a few things, and, and one of the things we haven't looked at for a while is the Stag engine that we've had in the new garage that we've now got. I know it's a bit cluttered behind me, needs loads of tidying up, but it is uh, weatherproof and warm with a radiator on, so that's really good. Um, so I thought today we'd just walk you around uh, the Stag engine that we had back uh, well over a year ago. It's been on an engine mount for a little while, uh, keeping uh, warm and cosy in our garages. Uh, and um, maybe it's good just to have a look around and, and see what we can see and just identify a few parts that uh, may be helpful for others when they're looking at rebuilding their engines and uh, whereabouts things are located. So let's go and have a look and um, we'll show you what I mean. Starting at the top of the engine then we have the um, Stromberg carburetors. You've got one here and one here and uh, these obviously feed uh, the engine itself with fuel and air. These little things are interesting just for uh, those that uh, don't know. You've got a bimetallic strip in here and that um, does affect the way that the Strombergs operate when it's hot or when it's cold um, and just adjusts things. So sometimes these can go wonky. I'll probably do a film on that at some point. Uh, these are interesting because they do affect hot starting I think on occasion if they're broken. So you've got one on both sides, one on this side and obviously one over the far side as well. Here's the linkage that you can see under the bonnet and obviously that's your throttle linkage on the carbs themselves and you've got your dash pots on top here which undo and should be topped up with oil from time to time just to make sure that the plunger is nicely compressed and so on. You can see there's some oil in there which is positive news and uh, so I'll just re-screw that back up now um, what else there's a few other things here i noticed earlier actually the um the water pipe here there's a water pipe that actually goes from this side to this side actually that's wrong this should be two pipes this one is the feed back from the matrix that would be sitting around about here under the dashboard of your stag uh, and this is the feed for hot water to come through the mojito matrix in your car uh, so that actually should be two pipes obviously we put that on just to complete the loop when they were running it in the garage Here's your distributor, it's got electronic ignition here, um, they're all set looking really nice and um, ran really smoothly when we had it running. And uh, there we have the, it's an automatic this one, so you've got a back plate on this car uh, that uh, then hooks into the Borg Warner 35 we've got for UNOA 49M, uh, the gearbox obviously goes on here and that's all good. Just working around the side of the engine, uh, again here you can see the um, oil uh, dipstick which um, actually is quite tricky to get to when you're in the car it's under the bonnet I don't know if anybody else would agree but um, this is slightly bent as well I think but it's actually if you look to test to check your oil <laughs> I'm struggling now trying to get the thing out it should just there you go it comes out like that but to, to get it back in is a bit of a fiddle because you you're trying to cram it in between the uh, the exhaust manifold there and uh, the spark plug so it can be a bit of a fiddle when you're under the under the bonnet and it's a fiddle getting it back in again now I'll have to do oh yeah okay we've gone back in so that's all positive um round the front here um here we've got the uh, the air intakes with a good top tip from Ari the Stag in fact any orifice like that um there's obviously the air intakes underneath here that needs to be taped up or blocked up because otherwise you can get all sorts of weird and wonderful mollusks and flies and creepy crawlies going into the uh, the air intake and obviously that goes into your Stromberg here uh, and that can cause problems. Uh, I once had a motor boat engine that uh, apparently had a water flow problem, and it was just a chrysalis stuck up the um, stuck up the air intake or the water flow intake, in fact, on that. Um, and just going back to the uh, the feed pipe I talked about earlier, uh, I said that should be two pipes, one uh, to the matrix, and this one going back out. That's a return feed. If you look along the rail, and we looked at this a few weeks ago when we did the antifreeze, that feed pipe comes from uh, a, a Y that's in the water pump housing. Just move the uh, spark leads out of the way uh, here. So you've got a split Y here, and that's the feed for your for your heater matrix that goes along there and eventually out the back over there. Uh, water pump uh, way underneath there, um, which is actually on top of the engine and uh, bolted down. And uh, you've got a, a 12 vein uh, kind of pump in there, impeller that passes the water around above it here. We've looked at this recently, haven't we, when changing the water and the antifreeze. Um, that's where your thermostat is based. Two bolts to hold that in with a bit of a, 
uh, kind of gasket in between and that's your water feed to go to the radiators and whatever at the front of the engine yeah uh, you've got your right hand bank and your left hand bank on the um, on the cylinder heads and uh, those are quite difficult to uh, remove and um, if any of you are on Saturday sockets you will have seen a few weeks ago there was a Rob Sport gizmo basically they welded together to exert pressure um, uh, difficult to see with all this stuff on top but um, to basically push these off by using hydraulic jacks and um, I thought that was a pretty good tip because you've got various bolts here holding the head on uh, these ones here and also these ones here and they are at funny angles and because the head is made of different metal compared to the uh, kind of cast iron block this is kind of alley that's cast iron then they tend to corrode here between especially with uh, little antifreeze in there so they start to bind together over the years and they're pigs to get off as we all know and uh, so just something to be aware of so here you have the uh, drive shaft pulleys on the front of the crank here at the front of the engine um, I forget which one is which, but one will be driving the alternator and one will be driving the power steering pump on various belts coming away from the engine here. This one at the front is quite interesting. As you can see, it's gathering dust, never really been used. Um, I'm assuming that's the one that we would use for um, uh, air conditioning and the air conditioning pump, which this car isn't fitted with. But I do know a lot of cars went to Australia and uh, elsewhere in the world, USA, I believe that it would have had air con on so that would have been the drive pulley for that third belt on there and um, just talking about the torque control unit a moment ago um, I've hooked this one out of the uh, the box of tricks for UNY49M obviously it's got to go back in the car in due course however um, as you can see it's it's a fan it's uh, this is your cooling fan so it sits on the front of the engine like so and rotates and obviously it's situated just behind the fan and pull there through these fans uh, to cool the radiator and obviously put cooler water back into the engine when it's uh, running and that is a very uh, standard piece of kit however the thing that's interesting is this torque control unit um, a lot of cars this is a mix of thermal as well as fluid resistance that enables this to turn so if you look here you can just see and I've done another video on this elsewhere but you've got a, um, a kind of collet there that is fixed to the crank shaft pulley at the front and is quite difficult to resist at the minute so um, the rotation will happen uh, of the fan at uh, kind of lower revs i understand it's not temperature controlled this at all it is totally fluid um, controlled and the fluid inside here shears when this is rotating at more than 2800 revs meaning it likely more free wheels at higher revs and if you think about it that makes sense because the car if it's doing that kind of number of revs should be traveling at speed in which case you've got wind and air coming into the front of the engine so that you don't need your fan so much as when you're in traffic and at slow speed so that's kind of really interesting um, these are all self-contained as far as I'm aware and it's all to do with the properties of the fluid that's uh, inside so with the stag i believe it's not a thermal um, coupling in there although there are some cars that have bimetallic strips in here that uh, also temperature sense as well as um, fluid sense and they send bits of fluid out to the outer reaches to increase the resistance but this is quite a simple one on the stag uh, totally uh, dependent on fluid on the inside and not temperature control but i think you can get the idea there it's very resistant right now but obviously as that uh, increases with speed it will shear more and therefore it free wheels more uh, because you don't need it so much at higher speeds as you do at lower ones clever stuff anyway there it is back on the engine kind of just hand held up looks like a proper engine now doesn't it happy days uh, here's your timing marks and um, zoom in quite closely on there you might just be able to see some little uh, uh, top dead center marks and some uh, advance and retard marks obviously you do your timing on that basis uh, this is a piece of wood holding up the front of the engine just to support it from bouncing around whilst we're moving it around and uh, yeah your plenums here so that's uh, where your air and fuel goes into the cylinders and interesting enough you've got a firing order that just helps you see what order the the, the stag engine is one two seven eight four five six three by the looks of it so we'll test you later on that again another bit of um, tape just keeping nasty flies and chrysalis is out of the machine and uh, overall all good so that's the kind of top of the engine uh, again we've got uh, exhaust gaskets um, and exhaust manifold here uh, nicely finished off uh, your exhaust downpipe 
obviously uh, bolts onto here with the three bolts. And then underneath here, you've got the starter motor, um, which is uh, uh, all in that uh, casing there. And good to see actually how it engages at the back when you come around here. You can see here, if I come right the way around without knocking everything over, there is a, basically you've got a, a, a cog on the front, uh, I think it's called a dog tooth cog that gets thrown forward into this casing here. And where my finger is, if you can just about see, then the cog engages here so uh, to, to, to rotate this plate to start your engine and obviously it recedes back in as soon as the engine starts so that's how your starter motor works and uh, is located to the bottom left of the underside of the stag engine and um, underneath again you've got various other things obviously that's a sump this bracket here is where your um, ball warner gearbox uh, attaches to and they've got two brackets either side to be able to do that. Around here on this side, a couple of things worthy of mention. Um, your oil pump is here and again we did a video on this many moons ago of how to take it all apart and uh, put it back in together. So that's all in there and here you've got the <coughs> the oil filter. This is the traditional one that came with the engine. Some people do like to uh, use an adapter such that it's angled <clears throat> in a different way and you can screw on a modern oil filter but this is the traditional canister type that was uh, cut that came with the engine and a bit grubby down here uh, you can just see the sump drain plug so if ever you need to change the oil that's where it is and uh, of course then you've got your uh, engine mounts bracketed to the side of the engine obviously that locates onto the onto the um, uh, engine bay inside so there you go. Hopefully that's uh, given you a quick round robin of the motor. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of engineering, as I say, and uh, can't wait eventually <laughs> to get it back into the car. Um, but uh, we're making progress with the car. I think Alan is getting there slowly, but surely. Uh, and uh, last I heard, the boot lid was being fixed uh, as we speak. So I'll, uh, I'll probably talk about that in just a second. But, uh, but there you go. That's the Stag V8 engine. Hopefully that's just given you a little bit of a uh, insights how to navigate around it and what's uh, what's involved and uh, it uh, really is a a marvelous piece of kit all right guys well i hope that um, gave you a little bit of a whistle stop tour around the engine um, many will be very familiar with the uh, engine plant itself but uh, i think it's a fantastic piece of kit as i mentioned and uh, good just to navigate around see what uh, what bits are where so that uh, maybe people can learn from that it's not always easy to see these things in the car when it's actually in the um, in the engine bay itself so i hope that's been of, uh, of use um, separately uh, this week i've had some really good news from alan and uh, he sent us some pictures in of the stag boot lid which uh, many of you will have seen three four weeks ago was in a right state of affairs it, for any other sane person the, the boot lid should have been over the wall to uh, it's a ignominious demise uh, down the local tip long time ago but we decided actually we we're going to rescue it so um, I've just popped on here a couple of photographs for you to look at to see the progress he's done a really good job more work still to be done he's going to uh, put another top coat another gloss after he's flattened it back again to um, really make sure that it's uh, popping but in the meantime he just wants to see what ripples uh, may still be there by putting that color coat on it uh, now so ink are yellow and first bit of paneling I think we've seen flat paneling that uh, looks really good so uh, very excited about the car coming back don't suppose it's going to be too much longer. I know lock lockdown's got in the way, but uh, he is uh, quietly getting on with the work. And the next job is to crack on with the doors. So uh, uh, then finally, I think the uh, the shell will be done and we should be seeing UNY49M back home. Very exciting. Very good. Okay, well, that's about it for this week, guys. I hope you're having a great time wherever you are. Please, please, please be safe and careful wherever you are. Uh, I know these are challenging times, but hopefully Ari the Stag brings you a bit of joy at the weekend. Uh, keep those messages coming back. Uh, if you want to send in videos or pictures, we're very, very keen to see those. Uh, don't forget to sign up for Saturday Sockets on a Saturday. It's an email of off-camera shenanigans that we get up to uh, every weekend, so it's free to do that. So just uh, hook on to the, um, uh, the website and sign up, and uh, we're glad to see you online there too good okay well stay safe have a great week and uh, thanks for watching please feel free to like share and subscribe as ever and we'll see you online on Ari the stag very soon all the best see you guys happy days Harry the stag <laughs>